Hi there, this is Josh from Literary Gladiators, and today I'm here with a Last Eight wrap-up, also known as the uh, Taurus Gemini Cancer Season 2016 wrap-up. Uh, I had said that I would be doing a Last Five wrap-up, like uh, Caitlin from Caitlin May uh, engages in uh, on her channel. Uh, her channel hasn't been producing new content uh, recently, but I still really like the idea of her uh, wrapping up the last five books that she read as opposed to doing it uh, monthly because of the amount of books uh, that could be read. But during the uh, last uh, few months, uh, I read and completed eight books and I wanted to share them uh, with you. Uh, I'm only, I'm going to give uh, brief details and uh, uh, brief details and thoughts because uh, many of these uh, were to uh, prepare for the uh, summer filming sessions. Uh, we're starting to film the fifth season of our show. But uh, I'm going to begin with the book that I buddy read with Michelle from Mi Michelle's Life. And that is A Strangeness in My Mind by Orhan Pamuk. I'm going to leave a link to the review down below, but uh, to briefly uh, sum it up, uh, The Strangeness in My Mind had to do with a uh, man named uh, Mevlut and his uh, experiences as a boza and yogurt seller in Turkey and his marriage, his children, his, and just his uh, life and times during a span of 43 years. And I felt that I got so much out of uh, this novel. I learned so much about Turkey and uh, life in the country of Turkey. And I really feel that uh, Pam Mook did an outstanding job explaining to the non-Turkish reader the uh, Turkish point of view. And I gave this a perfect uh, five stars on Goodreads. Uh, I'm going to, from here on out, uh, I'm going to be giving my uh, Goodreads uh, rating as opposed to the 0 to 10. Uh, I'm doing uh, 0 to 5 with uh, half stars permitted. Next thing I picked up is The Murder of Roger Ackroyd by Agatha Christie, and this was a suggestion of my good friend Ari, who is a fellow gladiator, and this has to do with the murder of Roger Ackroyd, and this is a, a Hercule uh, Perrault uh, novel. Uh, this is told through the eyes of Dr. Shepard, and we're following him on the journey as uh, he explains the uh, events that are taking place and the multiple uh, suspects that are being accused, whether they are in the house or uh, related to uh, Roger Ackroyd himself. And you get a lot of uh, specific details, and I really think that the map that the... Uh, I think that the uh, visuals are quite uh, helpful, like the one that you see here on page 81. But I really feel that it was a mystery that was well put together. My only criticism is that it was very predictable and that there were uh, moments where I felt that the... Uh, the flow was a bit, uh, I felt that the uh, character development was a little bit paper thin. And while on one hand it was uh, a mystery that threw people off during that time, in this day and age, you just have to think of one thing and it is to some extent uh, uh, predictable, which in a way is not uh, 
that means that it, uh, it stood the test of time because the Perot series stood the test of time. But with regard to the structure, uh, it may uh, turn some people off. And some people don't like predictability. I give it three and a half out of five stars. Next thing I got was The Essential Scratch and Sniff Guide to Becoming a Wine Expert by Richard Betts. And I picked this up because I'm looking to uh, work on a novel idea and because I'm writing about a character that is a wine connoisseur, I want to learn a bit more about wine. And I think that this was very helpful. It sells for retail at $19.99. I believe I got it cheaper off of Amazon. Structured like a, a children's book, but on the other hand, it definitely appeals to adults. And you're not uh, scratch and sniffing particular wines, but instead you're, scratch and sniff, you're scratching and sniffing uh, different elements that make up the wine. For instance, uh, you have the, uh, the different types of uh, white wines down here, but instead you're scratch and sniffing uh, the pear. And the scent is pretty nice too. Uh, and I think that this was, as I said before, it's just, I think that this is a good way for a beginner that really is into drinking wine and wants to learn much more about it and the culture behind it. Uh, this is a good one to pick up. And I gave it four out of five stars. Next thing I picked up was The Road by Cormac McCarthy. And this has to do with a father and son's journey during the post-apocalypse. They are unnamed, but the father possesses a sense of uh, a need to look after his young son. And his son is at that age of innocence where he sees a good or a potential good in everyone, though his father... Uh, warns him about the bad people in the world. And I feel that this was a postmodern accomplishment, but I still felt that there were uh, moments that I felt a bit iffy uh, when reading. And I think that there were things that could have been uh, developed better. I gave this three and a half out of five stars. Next thing I picked up was one of my fellow Gladiator's favorite novels, uh, Larry's, and that is The Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck. Last year I read and thoroughly enjoyed uh, East of Eden, and it was uh, uh, number one on my list of uh, top ten books that I read in 2015. Grapes of Wrath explores the... Uh, Dust Bowl in Oklahoma, and the Jode family, who uh, makes the decision to move westward to California to seek uh, great opportunity, which harps on that idea that everybody, people continue to look for that great opportunity, even if uh, history has been firm with their uh, statement regarding the uh, great success of uh, immigration, which it has been, but we continue to develop, and this particular novel uh, explores that, and especially does so with the turtle in chapter three, which I started reading this four years ago, but that chapter about the turtle really... Uh, got to me, but once I thought critically about that, 
it was really an enlightening experience. And I really felt that uh, Steinbeck is amazing when it comes to uh, fleshing out characters, setting, plot, and just putting together a story that you're going to connect to. My criticism has to do with the density that uh, these that this one uh, uh, possessed. I felt that it was a little bit uh, slower than uh, East of Eden, but I still really enjoyed it and uh, recommend it. I gave it a four out of five. Next thing I picked up was a recommendation by Kelsey, but for the wrong reasons. Kelsey constantly brings up her distaste for this particular novel, and that is The Catcher in the Rye. I read this a few weeks ago, and uh, with regard to Holden Caulfield, I felt that he was that teenager that I would want nothing to do with. But then again, he also uh, possesses uh, various traits that uh, people his age tend to have. And I felt that this was uh, postmodern right at its peak because it just has to do with uh, Holden Caulfield. We're just following the life of Holden Caulfield and his uh, bumps in the road and his just him being himself and it just I, I felt it was okay because I really he really annoyed me but the one thing that I liked about him is his compassion toward his little sister Phoebe and his deceased younger brother Alan and I gave this a 3 out of 5. Next thing I picked up was a novel that's often on high school curriculums, just like The Catcher in the Rye, and that's To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. I really enjoyed this. It started out a bit slow, but I felt that it really picked up and made a great uh, uh, historical statement. I feel that this is a great uh, book to read if you want uh, a literary uh, approach to uh, the American South and uh, issues involving race that take place down in the And this is a great source for uh, the literary approach to issues involving race in the American South. And I feel that this is just, uh, I think that it was very clever to uh, tell this, for, or to have uh, a young girl talking about her experiences because we have the opportunity to learn together uh, these uh, many of uh, negative uh, happenings that are taking place. I gave this four and a half out of five stars and I think that this is rightfully redeemed. And the last thing I completed was I Vampire which was written by Joshua Hale Falikoff, and uh, the artwork is, was put together by Andrea Sorrentino. This is uh, Volume 1, Tainted Love, and I'm looking to get more into uh, reading comic books, and I, Vampire, caught my attention, being the enthusiast for horror fiction that I am, but this was... Uh, a revamp of the uh, 1980s series. Uh, it follows uh, Andrew Bennett, who became a vampire in 1591, 
he turned Mary, the Queen of Blood, into a vampire, and now she is looking to uh, take over the world with her army of vampires, but Andrew Bennett is uh, defending uh, a humanity whom he sees as being innocent. And in this case, uh, we see appearances from other heroes like Hellblazer and uh, Batman himself. I'm really looking forward to seeing where this series goes, but I think that it needs a uh, great improvement. I felt that this first, uh, the first six in the series, which this is a bind up of the first six comics, I felt that they were a bit paper thin. I felt it was very uh, rushed and I was a bit confused because I really had a challenging time keeping track of each of the characters. And I felt that we didn't get as much uh, depth as... I felt I didn't get as much depth as I had wanted to. I gave this 3 out of 5. These are my most recent reads. And I'm looking forward to the upcoming months. I have a lot in store. And I thank you for tuning in to this particular video. For now, and as always, I encourage you to keep reading.